Hi everyone, my name is Emma White and I have set the challenge for this week's Workout Wednesday and I'm going to walk you through how I achieved it. Perhaps you did something similar or perhaps you did something completely different. That's the great thing with these challenges is there's always more than one way to do the same thing in Tableau. The challenge this week is to create a drill down scatter plot using set actions. This is something that I did as a challenge a few years ago in 2017 and it was kind of tricky and I wondered if set actions would make creating this drill down any easier. It's possibly slightly easier but we still have to go through a couple complica complicated steps. So this is what we're looking for. So at the start I have uh, states on this scatter plot by sales and profit. If I was to click California I then get rid of all the other states and just show the cities in California my title changes you'll notice that I've got some coloring on the marks so anything that isn't profitable is red anything that is profitable is blue and if I double click a city I go back to that state level so let's give it a go at recreating this so I'm just going to start from scratch and I'm going to create that scatter plot first. So let's put profit on columns and sales on rows. I get one mark. So this is for my entire data set. What is the total profit and total sales? So let's break that down to have a more interesting scatter plot. So let's bring state onto detail. So now we get a mark for every state. Let's format that shape. And what I need to do now is to create that set action just to start making things a bit more interactive. So let's go to worksheet and we'll go to, let's create the set first. So let's uh, right click state, go to create set. And I'm just gonna call this uh, selected state. Let's just choose all of them for now press OK and I have that now over here on the left hand side. So let's create that set action. So I go to worksheets because I'm on the worksheets, go to actions. Let's remove this old one and add a change set values action. I'm going to call it drill down to state and we want it to fire on the selected state set and when we clear the selection we want it to remove all the values but we'll leave it as assign the values on a select action press ok and ok again i'm going to delete this old set so it doesn't get confusing so now uh, nothing happens at the moment when, when I do anything because I haven't got anything set up for it. So let's start off by creating the cities that we're going to see on in the view when we click on a state. And to do that, I, I actually created a calculated field. I didn't put city into the view. So let's create a calculated field. I'm going to call it cities in selected state and it's just going to be an if statement based on that set so if um, the selected state set is is false then bring back my city else just label it with this um, uh, just end it just end that calculation. So it's going to be null if a state is selected. It's going to be null if it's empty. If the set is empty, then it's going to show me my cities. Other way around. If it's true, then city, otherwise end. So if I bring this onto detail, I shouldn't see anything at the moment because I have nothing in my set. Let's bring the set onto the view as well. So let's show you the set. So there's absolutely nothing in it at the moment. So that's a false set. If I click this one, 
then my set is then true because I have something added and now I can see um, I can see multiple things so I've, I've still got the old states in here so the states that are uh, not in the set are still showing up because they're on detail in the view but if I come to this cluster down here this is where I can start seeing the cities uh, in the tooltip you can see the city name for the cities in California and otherwise that city name is blank. So what I need to do now is I need to filter out the states that are not selected in that set. And I did this uh, using a few calculations. So I'm gonna break it down into three parts. So let's create a calculated field. This is gonna be my filter part one. And it's just gonna be um, assigning values to that uh, selected state. So if the selected state, so if that set um, is false, so if it's empty, then return a one. Otherwise, if it is true, uh, then return a two. And then I can close it. The second part of this is to return, to create a calculated field to return the, the max of those values in the view. So I'm going to call this filter part two. So this is going to be a level of detail calculation. So you could write it like this. So fixed for everything in the data set, just return me my max filter one. If you wanted to, oops, I chose the wrong bracket there. So if you wanted to uh, simplify this, you could literally get rid of this fixed part here. And it's exactly the same thing going on. So for the entire data set, return me the max number of this uh, filter part one. And then I want to create my third filter calculation. Nope, not a not a parameter. I want to create a calculated field. I'm going to call this filter part three, and I'm just going to return the values where part, the part one and the part two are the same. So I want filter part one to equal filter part two, and then I'm going to that returns a boolean true false field. So if I bring it onto my filter shelf and just select the true, so I only want to show um, either states or cities in the scatter plot where those those values are equal. So now that's kind of got rid of uh, all of the other states in the view. So you can now see that you know using the tooltip, each one of these marks is a city in California. If I clear the set, then I only get the states returned and no cities. I've created this table to show you what I'm doing with those filter calculations. So this lists me all of the states and it gives me the minimum value of that filter part one. And then uh, the filter part two is over here. So that is that fixed for everything in the data set. What is my maximum uh, P1 value? So now if I, for example, set California, uh, that's testing true. So when it's true, it should return a two. So it is, it's returning a two there. And if it's not true, so if it's not selected in the set, it should keep it as a one, which it's doing here. And then my filter part three is just testing if these two match each other. And if they do match, then you bring them back. Otherwise you filter it all out. So that's why my scatter plot, when I click a state, if I click California, OK, I'm only going to bring back the cities because none of those other states are true or selected. So hopefully that explains that little trick there. So what we have to do now is we have to create our colours. So for every mark that is unprofitable, I want it to be red. Again, I did that with a calculated field. Let's call this profitable. And I'm just going to test if the sum of profits, and it has to be a sum, not each individual row, is greater than zero. 
and I bring that onto color I and mean, we probably have to adjust these colors yeah we do so let's edit these colors um, so if it's true I want it to be blue and if it's false I want it to be red so if it's not profitable then red that's all working good and I like to reduce the opacity when I'm using a scatter plot down to about 75 percent okay so that's the filter working uh, the drill down working and the colors are working now let's do the labels and the title so in the original view um, I've got marks labeled where they don't overlap um, with either the state or the city so uh, to do that uh, we're going to create another calculated field for the label so we're saying if uh, selected state is true so if it's in that uh, set selection then return the city else return the state if I bring that onto my labels I see because I've got California selected it's showing me the city names if I unselect it it brings back the state names and we're going to do something really similar for the title as well. So another calculated field, I'm going to call this title. So if my selected state is true, so if there's something in that selection, it's going to say, I think it's sales versus profit for the state. So else, if it's not true, then sales versus profit for states. And let's end that. Oops, I forgot the word then. Okay, so let's bring that into the view. I tend to put it into detail. And then if we edit the title, uh, we'll center it and we'll insert that new title field. Okay, so that's for states, and then if I click it, it should say California. Um, then let's create the subtitle. And this just gives instructions to the user. So if the set selected state is true, then it should say double click a city to drill up two states else if it's false then uh, click a state to drill down to city cities and and again bring that into the view so we can use it in the title edit the title, pop that subtitle underneath and you can change the size and everything. So let's drop that down a little bit. Let's make the title bold. There we go. And that's everything. Obviously you'll make this into a dashboard, but this is working for now. And you'll want to tidy up your tooltip. Uh, I do that by uh, just I'm um, clicking things that shouldn't be in the tooltip and then obviously you can go to your worksheet tooltip and tidy up in here so I think I just had the state or the city so let's let's use the label and then I had profit insert the sum of the profit and sales insert the sum of the sales Great, and then, okay, that tooltip looks much better. That's everything. I hope you, I hope you got the solution, but if not, hopefully this video helps. Thanks very much, and I hope to do another workout Wednesday with you soon.